Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you're a first time viewer, please go down and click subscribe. If you're a return viewer or subscriber, thank you very much. Once again, I do appreciate everyone being here. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. What we're going to talk about tonight is one of the latest updates to the UDM Pro. Now, uh, version 1.9 of the UDM software came out as general release. And in those general release notes are multiple WAN IP addresses. So I fired this up on the UDM, UDM Pro, which by the way, full disclosure, Ubiquity did send this to me uh, a while ago. And I've been testing it um, ever since. So here we are, we're over here, we're updated to 1.9 and it also updates the controller to 6.1.61 which may or may not be a good thing. We'll just have to, we'll have to see, we'll have to play it by ear. There's a lot of changes happening in Unify. But this one I'm particularly excited about. Um, so if we go over to Networks and we go to WAN, you'll see that my WAN is 192.168.66.0 and they actually changed this instead of saying IP, it says subnet. Or they fixed one of these. I had turned it in as a, a bug fix, it was displaying improperly, where it was, actually wasn't displaying what the, the column was and I can't remember now if it was, it was displaying the IP down here I think instead of the subnet. But um, if you go to edit, you'll see we've got a static address on here and now we've got this additional IP addresses. So what we can do is we can add 192.168.66.207 and we can add 192.168.66.208 and we're going to go ahead and click save. Now this should give us an error and it did because even though we've got the subnet mask here we have to specify the subnet mask here. We're going to go ahead and click save and now we have three WAN IPs on our UDM Pro. So now what we can do is the, we can't do, let's start with what we can't do. What we can't do is come in to a SNAT or DNAT situation and fine tune these rules. Now whether that's coming or not, I don't know. However, what we can do is come into port forwarding. We can create a new port forwarding rule and we'll call this uh, 206. It'll be uh, on our WAN port, we're going to enable it. Destination IP now, which IP is this destined for? 206, 207, or 208? So now we can do 206. We're going to allow it from anywhere. We're going to say port 80. And we'll say 192.168.222.15. And we'll update the port forwarding, and it's going to be TCP only. We'll save that. Boom shows up. All right, let's create another one. We'll call this one 207 and we're going to use some of the same things except it's going to go to 207. It's going to be port 443. We'll update that port forward and we'll do TCP on this. doesn't matter. I'm just showing you that this, this does uh, work. Now there is some information that I would like to see on this screen like which IP on my WAN interface this is for. In this one, we'll call this Sino um, 1, and it's going to be for 208, and it'll be 5001, and this would be 192.168.222.50. Update port forward, and now you can see we have port forwarded through all three of those. Now, what that what will happen is if you have, you know, traffic coming in. Obviously, it's going to return on the same path, right? So if it's coming in 206 on the port forward, it's going to leave and go back out. But there are some situations where you may use a UDM Pro. And let's say you've got to send like files to a bank, uh, pause pay files, very a normal thing to do. And sometimes that server is going to be in your subnet, but you need it to be seen as a different IP address than the other servers to the outside world. So, you know, you're going to use a, a NAT rule to do that, and we can't fine-tune that here yet. I don't know if that's coming or not. 
So as easily as we created the rules, we can delete them. Delete, delete, delete. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into networks. We're going to go back into WAN. And I'm going to delete 208. And now you see here, I can't remove 207, or so you think. So while you cl cannot click the X, what you can do is highlight the IP address and then click Save. And now my multiple WAN IP addresses are gone. So they've made really good progress here. A few more things, and I think they'll have it dialed in. Um, hopefully a firmware doesn't kind of mess us up. I am going to uh, find a connection with real routable IPs, non-RFC addresses, where we can try this out. Um, of course, doing it internally, it's been working just fine. So the real test is real traffic, you know, hitting it on the WAN interface and seeing exactly how it holds up. But, I mean, at least this shows that they are making progress, and that's fantastic. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to support the channel by using all of our affiliate links, they are down below. They don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks to the channel. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.